Hi everyone, you reach Chronicles of the Gray Hair Diva. If this is your first time, welcome. If not, welcome back. For all of you out there, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that every time I upload a video, you will be notified. Hit the like button, chat with me in the comments, and when I get opportunity, I will chat back. And share my video with your friends and family so that they can come to my channel and get to know me also. I'm here today with a quick video on Lisa Renna. It's my tea time moment of the day. And listen guys, be proud of me. I made my own tea. Just a simple black tea with nothing in it. So why am I dedicating this moment to Lisa Renna from The Real House, formerly from The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills? Because you know what? I want us to understand that sometimes you can learn a lesson from the most unlikely person. And I think Lisa Renner's story can show us all a lesson in a positive way. So let's get into it. Since she's been let go or she left, whatever way you want to look at it or she's looking at it, from the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, she has been making her round to different news outlets, talk shows to talk about the exit and how she felt about her time when she was on the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. One thing I can say I like about it, she has no regrets. OK, she said it was what it was. It did what it did. And she utilized the platform to her benefit. So she said, when you do something like reality TV, you have to go up there pretty much with a game plan. And I'm paraphrasing her words, guys, a game plan to say, you know what? I'm exposing my life to the world. But while I'm exposing my life, I'm going to go there to build my brands, to rebrand myself and to give my career life. She said when she started The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, you know, her career was kind of on a downfall. And that Bravo in Real Housewives of Beverly Hills helped her boost it up. So let's hear what she said to the Today Show. And then I'm going to give you my final thoughts. So hold on one second. Let me see if I could go back to this. All right, let's listen. It was listen. absolutely worth every second. Why do you say that? I say that because I was at a point in my career where that just rejuvenated it. And I was able, it, it's great real estate. I call Bravo, I call the Housewife franchise really good real estate. Yeah. So you can go on there and you can reinvent your career. And I was able to sell the brands that I wanted to create and sell. And so that to me is why you do something like that. That's why you do a show like that. It's a vehicle, but it still takes yeah, a toll. It is a challenging show. I give everybody so much credit for doing it because you are showing your real life. How does it feel to walk away? Fabulous! So here's the thing. She said, up, oh, it's fabulous. It feels great that I um, walked away, got let go, whatever. Like I said, however you want to look at it. So when I was growing up, they used to always have this commercial about wearing your seatbelt, okay? Because a seatbelt um, will help you in case you are in an accident. The seatbelt can perhaps help save your life. And so what they would do in these commercials, they would have a car. They would have two dummies in the car, okay, that, that um, resemble bodies. Um, they would show us a car crash with somebody who didn't have a seatbelt on, and that person went flying through the window. I promise you it was a commercial like this. And then they would show the person driving it in a car accident, and they had the seatbelt on, and it would show them kind of bounce forward and bounce back. And the, the um, model or the line for that commercial was, you can learn a lot from a dummy. OK, so they pretty much saying, listen, you see these two dummies in the car here. One wore their seatbelt, one didn't. You see how the one that wore their seatbelt pretty much their life was saved. And the other one that didn't have the seatbelt on, you know, their life wasn't saved. So what are you talking about, Diva? I'm saying to everyone, even though you don't like Lisa Renner, even though Lisa Renner was the villain, even though Lisa Renner was vicious and vile when she was on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. One thing you can learn from her is that sometimes the very thing that you think you can't survive without, that you're afraid to leave because you're thinking, how am I going to eat dinner tonight? What am I going to do? Even though that job that you are in uh, may be giving you headaches every time you wake up to go to that job and you think that that job is the end all be all. And if you leave it, what are you going to do? Here it is that Lisa Renna, she never wanted to leave the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Let's be clear. We all know she got pushed out. And um, the straw that broke the camel's back was her performance last season when she just did all of those things to Garcelle in addition to Kathy Hilton. So my point is to say this, 
that Lisa Renner, at the end of the day, she never wanted to leave that job, but probably once she got let go, a weight was lifted off of her because I think she felt like she had to be more and more performative over the years in order to keep her Bravo check. Okay. And so once she was let go, she's like, I feel fabulous. I do believe her because sometimes you're like in this box. And then when you step outside the box, you're like, whoa, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I'm still going to be able to eat dinner at night. I, I feel better. I feel a weight lifted off of me. I didn't like being the villain. And I listen, I don't know how feelings, but I'm just saying, I didn't like being the villain. And I did it because I needed that paycheck. But now that I'm no longer in it, I feel great. Okay. And you see her husband feels the same way. And so there are some people, like I said, on their jobs where they think that job is the end all be all. And if they leave, how will I eat? How will I feed, feed my family? And then some of them, it goes to the stream, they get fired or some of them, they get so sick because they're staying on that job that is just giving them a headache that they end up going out on a medical leave as a result of not making a decision. So that's why I said you can learn a lot from a dummy. Lisa Renner got pushed out, but she feels great. And I'm saying if anybody is in that corner or they're stuck in a situation and they think there's not light at the end of the tunnel, learn from Lisa Renna. Although she got pushed out, you can leave. You can do better. You can survive. Don't stay with a person that is not treating you in the way that you want to be treated. Don't stay on a job that is you. When you wake up to go to that job, you, you're getting headaches. You're making yourself sick to your stomach. When you are in a situation that doesn't support you and make you feel good, that's giving you a headache or agita or whatever, leave, leave. There's hope, there's light, and there's an opportunity on the other side of that mess that you're refusing to let go. Now, I hope y'all connected with my jungleness in this tea time today. Okay, forgive me if you didn't, but the point of my tea time is don't stay stuck. Don't stay stuck. You never know. You're holding on to this little thing right here, but maybe a big blessing is waiting for you over here. Don't be a Lisa Renner where you have to get kicked out of a situation in order to see the other side. Empower yourself. Leave that mess behind so that you can go on to bigger and greater things. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to hit the like button. Chat with me in the comments. And when I get an opportunity, I will chat back. See you on the next video. If you're not a subscriber, subscribe. A lot goes on over here at the with the Great Tribe on the Chronicles of the Great Hair Diva. And I would love to have you as a subscriber. Listen, see you in the next video. And tonight, if you're free, today's the 16th, okay, of February, because sometimes people see, um, you know, the video way after. Um, tonight, if you are free, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I am interviewing from the DeBodge family. This is back in the time of the Jacksons, okay, Michael Jackson and the Jackson family. There was another prominent R&B family in the mix during that time, and they were the DeBodge family. Well, they have 11 children all together, like 11 children were part of that family. I'm interviewing one of them, Bunny DeBodge. Join me tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hope to see you there. I think it's going to be a very informative and interesting interview. She's going to talk a little bit about the music industry. She's going to talk about some of the pitfalls that she um, fell into um, personally and professionally. Um, I think it's going to be an amazing time. Once again, y'all have a good day. I hope you enjoyed this tea time and I'll see y'all in the next video.